So my name is Elisa Suen. Um, I'm from the NIEHS down in Durham, Raleigh, Durham, RTP, North Carolina. Um, the school that I'm affiliated with is UNC, so I'm actually a graduate student at UNC Chapel Hill and I'm doing my research in Carmen Williams' lab. She's in the Reproductive and Developmental Biology lab at the NIEHS. Um, right now I am working on understanding mechanisms of uterine cancer development that result from early life estrogen exposure and that's what I'm doing my dissertation research on right now and I'm a, a third year, going into my fourth year right now. So. Excited to be at the NIH. Uh, this is my first time coming, and it's really cool to make a pilgrimage back to the mothership and hang out here for a couple days, so very excited about that. We want to know more about how uh, neonatal estrogen exposure results in uterine cancer development later in life. So we use two different estrogens. One is a very potent synthetic estrogen called diethylstilbestrol. Um, women were prescribed it uh, between the 30s and 70s and it resulted in their offspring who were prenatally exposed and a lot of them, or a small amount developed vaginal cancer. So. We know that a lot of people these days um, are exposed to either low-level EDCs or estrogenic chemicals, and we want to understand if these are causing other reproductive issues, um, one being possibly uterine cancer. So the other estrogen we use is called genistein. It's a soy-based phytoestrogen. Um, the largest exposure that we know of right now is when uh, infants on soy-based uh, formulas, they get exposed to high levels of genistein um, if they're only on soy-based infant formula. So if we expose our mice to either genistein at a relevant dose that humans would see or infants would see, um, or a pretty high level of DES, which is the other synthetic estrogen, um, a, a high percent of them will get a uterine cancer by 18 months of age. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at one particular gene that we've seen overexpressed in the uterus, and I'm trying to determine whether or not that gene is necessary or sufficient for cancer development. So, so far I found that it correlates really well with um, cancer development in, in our mice. And what I've now done is uh, we're using a transgenic model where we're overexpressing this gene, which I haven't told you yet. It's called 6-1 Sinoculus Homeobox 1. The Homeobox transcription factor not normally expressed in the uterus, but turned on when we give a neonatal estrogen exposure. And so I've overexpressed this gene in the uterus of these mice, or I've deleted it. And I want to know if overexpression in the uterus is going to lead to cancer development or if I can knock it out specifically in the uterus and then treat with an estrogen and whether or not they don't get cancer. Because we would hypothesize that if the gene's not there, they're not going to get cancer. And then um, finally, I've also looked in some human uterine cancer biopsies to see if this gene has any human relevance. And I have found that it is in um, human cancer or human uterine cancer, and it seems to correlate with cancer stage, which makes sense because we we uh, we know that this gene in, is involved in cell proliferation and cell migration and lymphangiogenesis. So that's what my research is on right now. Oh, I, I mean, I could have chosen a lab at UNC for sure. They have some fantastic labs, developmental stuff. Um, I really wanted to do reproductive toxicology, and the lab that I'm at right now, they're, they're one of the, the best labs for um, environmental estrogen exposure and uterine cancer. I wanted to do a cancer endpoint. Um, it's a great place to be, one of the best places to do research. Um, can't be the NIH, so yeah. Thank you so much.